I will show you how to handle the most uh, common navigation use cases in a Compose multi-platform for iOS and Android. We are gonna use uh, one amazing uh, open source library called uh, Voyager. It's uh, very simple and uh, easy to use with Jetpack Compose. You will be able to pass uh, various uh, types of arguments without a problem, implement uh, nested navigation, transition animations and more. Be sure to check their official GitHub repository and a corresponding website for more information. I will include the links. This library offers uh, quite a few features, however, here I'm gonna focus on uh, navigation only. There are multiple artifacts that you can include in your project, and for now I'm gonna use uh, only three of them. Navigator, Tab Navigator and the Transitions. The first one to handle the basic navigation, the second one to implement a tab navigation with a bottom bar for example, and the third one for a transition animations. So, to build a project from scratch, you can open up the KMP wizard and uh, generate a template for a composed multi-platform including uh, Android and iOS. After you download uh, and open up the project, uh, you will see quite familiar structure with some basic examples. We can remove those uh, unnecessary files from uh, different source sets here. Then, we can open up the version catalog, which is uh, located in the Gradle directory, and uh, create a new version string for the version number of the Voyager library. Then, let's also add uh, those uh, three artifacts that I have mentioned earlier as well. Perfect! Next, after that, just uh, sync the project. If you happen to see a compile time error after successfully syncing the project, just open up a different tab and come back again. It should be gone by then. Great. By the way, you can use any other ID that you like, but I find the fleet very useful, especially because I can run both Android and iOS simulator. Keep in mind that you still need an Xcode installed on your system to use the iOS simulator. Fleet uh, still lacks uh, some important uh, shortcuts and the uh, handy features that we have with uh, Android Studio for example, but uh, I'm sure we'll see some uh, new stuff in the upcoming releases. Alright, so the first thing, we're gonna start with a basic uh, two-screen navigation structure and navigation arguments. So, let's create a new directory or a package with the name of a screen. And then, two more for a home and detail screens. Now, create a new Kotlin file with the name of a home, where we're gonna define the look of our home screen. To represent a composable screen, we need to create a either class or a data class if you want to accept arguments. In this case, we can just uh, create a class for a home screen. Then, we need to implement a, a screen interface that belongs to the Voyager library. This allows us to override and implement a content composable function where we define the content of the screen itself. Now the content of the home screen should be quite simple. So let's add the button on the center of the screen and wrap it inside the box composable. Awesome! After that, we can copy and paste this whole file and just name it differently to represent a detailed screen. In this screen we can add some additional components, like a scaffold, then a top app bar inside it, then we can also specify the title and the navigation icon as well. Finally, on the center of the screen just add a simple text that says a detail screen. Perfect! This uh, details uh, screen uh, lacks uh, something however. Oh wait, I know, we can add uh, some kind of uh, an argument that this screen can accept. You can specify uh, any type of your choice, but for now let's just add a simple one, for example an integer value. So, convert this uh, regular class into a data class and uh, add uh, one new property to represent that argument. This argument uh, can be printed on the center of the screen within the existing text. Great! So now you might be wondering, how can we handle the navigation between those two? In Android, we have a nav host and a nav controller, which was used to control destinations. Here, however, as you can see, we have the root composable inside the app Kotlin file. And, instead of using a nav host like we would in Android, I'm gonna call the navigator and pass the start destination to be a home screen. So just initialize this home screen class like so, and you're good to go. 
after we have specified a star destination, and now we need the logic to navigate between those screens. And, instead of using the nav controller, we can access the navigator by calling localnavigator.current, which is a similar way we call a context in Android. To better understand what kind of functions you have on your disposal with this navigator, be sure to check their stack API sections of the documentation. With this example here, you can easily understand the navigation between screens in a Compose multiplatform and the Voyager library. To navigate to a certain screen in your application, you can use the push function, and when you need to close the screen, you can use a pop function. So let's go back and apply that to our project. When a button is clicked, uh, we need to navigate to a detail screen and uh, pass an argument. So just call here a navigator.push and pass a detail screen class. When initializing this class, we also need to specify that argument that we have declared earlier. Awesome! And finally, if you want to go back to that previous uh, screen, we can also initialize and create a new navigator variable inside the detail screen and uh, call a pop function when the back arrow button is uh, clicked. This will simply pop the last uh, screen from the back stack and we are gonna get back to the previous one, which is in this case a home screen. Awesome! You get how simple it is, even better than with a default navigation library in Android. We can now run the application on a both Android and iOS. So, when the button is clicked, we are navigating to the details screen. And to the details screen, we are passing a hard-coded argument in this case, which is why we are seeing number 10 here. And if we wish to go back, just press the back arrow button and we are gonna pop off the current screen from the back stack. The same thing works for either one of those two emulators. Awesome! So, now as a cherry on top of the cake, let me show you how you can add a transition animation when navigating between those screens. Open up the app Kotlin file and just call a slide transition inside the navigator trailing lambda. Also, be sure to pass the navigator from that lambda as well. Now, let's run the application to see how it looks like. Wow, the transition is uh, so smooth and clean. It works uh, right out of the box. Now, of course, you can customize it for a more, and for that, just be sure to visit their official website and documentation to check that out. Now that you have seen uh, how simple it is to handle a basic navigation, let's try implementing a, a bottom bar with uh, tabs. First, I'm gonna create here a new directory where I should host uh, all my tabs. Then, for each one, create a new subdirectory. After that, let's start with the first one, a home tab. Now, when working with tabs, uh, we don't use a navigator, but a tab navigator instead. Tab navigator doesn't handle a back press because uh, all tabs are uh, siblings. Also, it doesn't implement a stack API, it just provides the current property. So, create a new Kotlin file for the first tab. Since this tab is not gonna hold any arguments, and it will not be reused anywhere, we can represent it as an object. This time, instead of screen, we're gonna implement a tab interface. So, override the same content composable function, add a simple UI to display the text on the center of the screen, and we need to override the one more thing here, which is the tab options. So for each tab we need to specify a few things, like the title, an icon, and a unique identifier represented as a U-short. Icon is optional here, which is why I'm gonna set that to null. We can also do the same thing for the other two tabs. So just copy the whole file two times, rename the file, change the package name inside it, as well as the text on the center of the screen. Then, for each tab, be sure to add a different index value and a title inside the tab options object. Great! So, after you have designed all those tabs, we need to go back to the root composable, in this case the app Kotlin file, and modify this code. As I said earlier, with the tabs, we don't use a regular navigator, but a tab navigator instead. 
As a parameter, we can pass a default tab, which will be displayed after we launch the application. And that can be Home tab. Great! The next thing, inside the lambda of the tab navigator, I will add a scaffold with a bottom bar as a parameter. And in that bottom bar lambda, I'm gonna add the three bottom bar items. One for each tab. So to make uh, things uh, simpler, uh, I'm gonna create here an extension function on a row scope and uh, add a bottom navigation item. This function will accept a tab, which uh, we are gonna use to decide uh, which one will be selected, then to handle uh, the on-click event and uh, display the corresponding title. Now we can call uh, this composable three times from the bottom bar lambda and uh, pass uh, each one of those uh, three tabs that we have created. Finally, as a content of our scaffold, call current tab function, which will display the currently selected tab on our screen. Perfect. Let's run the application on a bot emulators and see how it looks like. As you can see, we have uh, three siblings or tabs that we can switch from the bottom bar itself. I haven't specified any icon for now, but uh, you can do that to make your UI look even better. And there you go, everything works like a charm. And the last uh, thing that I want to show you here is uh, how to implement the nested navigation. We are gonna reuse the same thing here, so all those are three tabs, only in this case our home tab will be a destination that will hold the nested navigation or a screens. In the content lambda of this tab, let's implement the navigator and pass a home screen as a start destination. If you recall, that's the screen that contains a button on the center of the screen, which points you to the details screen afterwards. Now, let's uh, leave everything as it is and just uh, launch the application on a boat emulators. You can see that now Home tab contains nested destinations, which are in this case Home and Details screen. Voila! Everything works great! What do you think about this library? Have you tried it before? Or are you waiting for the official solution from the Android developers team? Comment down below and let me know. Thank you for watching!